to start. You know, I love to start with just say the word kindness three times and actually take yourself off mute for this one. Um, and let's say the word kindness together three times at the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Kindness. 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 Beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Let that reverberate. Let that resonate. Let that get into your heart, your spirit and soul. And I went to this winery. They actually make kind wine. I'm not kidding. Look at the cute little sign they have called Be Kind. It's in Napa Valley. Just saying. It's called Be Kind Wine. Is that hysterical or what? I love it. We've made the mainstream, my friends. When it's on wine, we've made the mainstream. <laughs> yes, yes. I love it. So Ralph Waldo Emerson has a quote, and he said, you cannot do a kindness too soon, for you never know how soon it will be too late. Okay, it's really important. Think about that. Ralph Waldo Emerson, our wonderful poet, you can never do a kindness too soon, for you never know how soon it will be too late. Yeah, okay. So. Be with that. Now, let me hear some acts of kindness. First of all, uh, tools are flying. Post them in the chat. And who'd like to share some acts of kindness you've done um, in within this week? Let's do a within this week. Who's done some acts of kindness? Raise your hand in the chat. Raise your hand in the reactions. Or raise your hand in the Hollywood Squares if we can find you and see you. I see Mike. I see Magnus. And I see who else? MJ, MJ, I'm not sure if that's clapping or you want to share. And do me a favor, post some acts of kindness in the chat. We love sharing your acts of kindness. All right, let's bring Mike in to share. Mike, what, what act of kindness have you done within this past week? Uh, I'll mute myself. Am I done? Yes. Um, Dr. Renee, Dr. Love was on a parents and children's conference and asked me if I'd come in as Father Christmas, as Santa, and talk to them and tell them how nice they all were and all the rest of it. And I oh. thought I said yes and did that. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for that. We love that. Yes, Santa is in the house. <laughs> love that. Thank you, Mike, for sharing. Let's um, bring in Magnus, please. Our speaker today, by the way, and we'll introduce him properly in just a bit. But Magnus, what's the kindness act you've done within the past week? I listened to somebody when they really needed to be listened to. I was very, very busy and somebody reached out to me and I had a lot of stuff on that afternoon. And it would have been so easy for me to ignore their WhatsApp message when they said, can we have a quick call? But I said yes. And, you know, it only took 15 minutes or so, but I was there for that person and helped them on their journey and, and in that moment. And you know what? I hope when I do the same thing, somebody does the same to me. So, um, Amen. Amen. Right. Because we never know when, you know, yeah. when we need to be just really heard and listened to. Thank you, Magnus. Appreciate that. Good, you know, I, you know, speaking of Ralph Waldo Emerson and too late kind of thing, I'll just share with you something personal that I was having a, a number of women over for uh, basically lunch and hanging out. And, and I get this text from one of my friends who said, you know, I can't make it today. I'm not feeling really well. I didn't feel well all night and I'm off to the doctor. And the next text was I'm on my way to the ambulance. Uh, via ambulance to get open heart surgery, right. where she not only had open heart surgery because of an aortic aneurysm with a dissection, which means she could have basically bled to death very, very quickly. But on top of that, um, she had too many strokes while she was in surgery. Okay, so when I saw that that quote, uh, she's doing well. And my act of kindness was not only to start a food train for her for when she gets out, but I called my doctor friend who lives in Spain now um, and said, we need help and we need a doctor advocate because frankly, they're not doing a really good job over there. And uh, she, she came in and anyway, just all this 
funny enough, I had done a lot of connecting of these people and they all came back together, not only to help her, but also, you know, we've created a meal train. I, I've sent out her GoFundMe uh, link for every single time I could and to everybody I knew. And, um, you know, and I thought about, oh my God, you know, who knows what could have happened? I mean, she's, she's young by the way too, you know? So I thought, isn't that interesting that we just never know? with people and that the time for kindness is right in the moment. Like Magna said about listening right then, about doing what was needed. Colleen, come on and share, please. Um, when you shared that quote, I was reminded of my niece. I kept feeling like I needed to reach out and, and really make sure she's doing okay and stuff. And I kept saying, well, I'm gonna see her on the weekend. So I'll just wait until then. Um, she died in that automobile accident two days before I was able to talk to her. So yeah, you never know. You never know. And there's no too soon for kindness. So I think we can all get that. And I think that that's really important. Thank you for that. Alexi, please share. Um, there's a site on Facebook called Rainbow Bridge where people can share when their loved ones have crossed over. Mm. And, you know, a lot of it is people are just sharing their pain and how much it hurts and whatever. And so I generally respond to whomever and I'll say, um, I say the dog's name is, uh, is Puffy. I'll say Puffy's angels up at Rainbow Bridge are, wanted me to relay this message to you that you were the best mom ever. Aww. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Well, I just celebrated one year of our starlight, sweet starlights passing, my kitty. Mm -hmm. And October is soul. Um, so unfortunately, they pass within a month of each other and we're right up against the anniversary. So maybe, maybe I will go post on that. Thank you, <laughs> Lexi. My sweet kitty's soul and starlight live on forever in my heart. Um, I wanted to uh, just see, thank you, and, and keep posting, feel free to keep posting in the chat is beautiful, and we appreciate that. Um, I love that, and I love the acts of kindness, and that it's, you know, again, never too soon. Um, just so you know, you know, People Magazine does this kindness awards uh, section in November. So watch for that. That's super fun. Um, we are having a kindness summit on November 12th. More about that in just a bit. But I just want you to put it in your calendar, November 12th, nine to noon. And Mary Beth will post that soon. But um, I just want to kind of put that in the mix so that you get it in your calendar. And I think that'll be really super. Um, Mary Beth, actually, let's uh, let's post for October. Here's what I'd love to do as a, a specific kindness today is ask you to invite someone for October as our guest. We'll post the link uh, for you. And that link is for you to invite a guest, okay? So please do uh, pass it around up to three because you're already here, you get to invite up to three. We love the community being bigger and bigger and bigger, but don't post it just on uh, social media. Go ahead and post it, you know, somewhere where your inner circle is. And um, also, just so you know, uh, that our October event, uh, I purposely, we're not going to have a speaker. We're going to have three circles of kindness networking. Okay, so that'll be super fun. And we would obviously love even more people to join us so that you have more of a beautiful kindness network. Okay, so that's our invite to you. And go ahead and use the link for three friends. We would love for you to uh, keep, keep the party going. <laughs> now, speaking of the party, I want to um, introduce our wonderful presenter today, Magnus Wood. He is out of London and he's a workplace kindness expert, okay? So I just wanna uh, share a little bit about Magnus and Mary Beth, I think uh, you're posting his bio in the chat. Oh, thank you so much. And I just wanna, you know, a little bit tell you that we had found uh, Magnus on LinkedIn actually with Maritza's help and, and he's doing great work in kindness. He comes from corporate, he comes from scrappy startups, which I think is hysterical. And he created a book called The Kindness Code, Seven Steps to Unlock the Power of Kindness at Work. He operates a kindness index. He's a, 
a cook, a forager, I'm assuming mushrooms, but I don't know, and uh, a gin maker, uh -oh, a yogi, and a father of two beautiful daughters. And he lives in London, and he's here to join us today. Welcome, Magnus. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Actually, I live, uh, I'm blessed to live slightly outside of London uh, on, a, on a houseboat. Uh, and you might see you might see a boat go past uh, at some point. So uh, I'm on my houseboat, which is also my office, and that I work out of um, for quite a few days in, in the week. So um, it's a real honour and a, and a pleasure to be with you. And and you know one of the things I love about my my job and my life is that I get to hang out with kind people all the time mm -hmm. and talk about kindness all the time. So you know it's a real joy to to see you all here. It's a real joy to see your commitment to to turn up on a, on a regular basis and to to hear about kindness and to share kindness and to to share stories of kindness and and we all know how powerful kindness is uh, for us in sessions like this you know i'm sure you all walk away from this you know when you close down zoom and feel so much better about the the connections you've made with people and and just feel really good about sharing stories of kindness and hearing stories of, of kindness so 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 it's an honor to be here so i'm going to talk for about 10 minutes about kindness at work which which isn't something that that people often think about and you know partly because you know the, there's a way of working sort of from back in the day when you know people used to think that work was uh, you know business was competitive it's dog eat dog and kind of all that you know it's full of hierarchies and structures and control and all of these things so so work got very much associated with you know ways of working that in many senses didn't serve the people who were working there but certainly didn't have much of a space for for kindness now my journey about kindness is that um, in 2019, uh, up until 2019, I'd been working in various organisations. I ended up running a large uh, multi-million dollar uh, organization uh, was owned by by a holding company who were very unkind uh, they their values were very different to mine you know I believe that the role of a leader is to create the environment for people to thrive and do their best work um, they didn't believe that so there was a kind of inevitable parting of the the ways and you know kindness for me was in many senses a gift that you know lockdown and covid was you know brought so much suffering to so many people but it, you know some good things came out of it and for me when we went into lockdown i've been asked about the kindness and creating kinder working environments by three different different clients because uh, i'd set up my own consultancy so that's when i wrote the book that's when i researched the power of, of kindness and found out about how powerful kindness at work but one thing that i discovered that really got me kind of riled and, and, and motivated and and continue to find now is the simple truth is for, for lots of people, work isn't working. They're not getting what they want out of work. You know, there's a study that was done by Gallup in, I think, 2018 or something like that, where they did a global research, piece of research and they found something like 80 percent of people are disconnected in some way from the work that they do. So that they're showing up at work and they're just disconnected for, from work. So you know, to, to a great extent, work isn't working for, for lots of people. Now, you know, you, you You'll have no doubt heard of the great resignation and there's now this th quiet quitting where people are sort of basically you know showing up to work but not really engaging with things you know these are all symptoms of of work not working for for, for people that people are finding you know it's burning them out you know they're not getting the emotional satisfaction they they want out of it you know work can be very tough for for people um and so you know i wanted to do something about that and you know came across kindness and these people had asked me about kindness and the, the more i looked into what kindness at work the more i realized that when kindness is present and i'll talk a little bit about it in a moment um when kindness is present the things that you want to see happen at work such as trust and creativity and innovation and teamwork and psychological safety and well-being you know all the positive things that you want to see happen at work go up when people are kind at work so basically the, what what i and my organization does is we, we answer two problems we 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 help people get more out of work through kindness because the problem is that you know work frankly sucks for lots of people but but the leaders of the organization who hire these people is they need these people to be thriving and doing their best work in order for their organizations to thrive so on one hand you've got people who are not 
disengaged and not getting the most of it. And on the other hand, you've got organizations that are trying to get the most out of these people. Kindness, I can absolutely assure you, is, is the answer uh, to, to so many things. And it's because it, it really is. Now, so one of the ways that one of the reasons it's the answer is is a simple definition of kindness that we we came out of uh, with the Kindness Corporation. And actually, funnily enough, started uh, we mentioned yoga earlier, Jill. It actually came out of yoga, which is one of the the sutras or one of the the, the principles of yoga is to to do no harm. So we were thinking about well, you know, it's very kind to to not do any harm to to anybody, and then actually. When in our work with various organizations and talking to lots of people, we, we made that more active. And so we define kindness, uh, and not just in a work environment. We, we have a definition of kindness, which is really clear and simple. So what we say about kindness is that kindness is a commitment in thought, word and action. So it's a commitment in thought, word and action to leave everyone and everything better. So it's a commitment in thought, word and action to leave everyone and everything better. And if you think about that definition of kindness, of leaving everyone and everything better, you realise how clear and simple it is and how clear and how you know when when something's been kind or not. So this session, you know, I'll, I'll talk for, for a few more minutes. You know, I really hope that, that you walk away from you know, what I share now, you know, better in the sense of you understand the power of kindness at work and how kindness can have, make a tremendous difference at work. And I know, Jill, with, you know, doing this on a regular basis, basis wants you all to walk away from these sessions, you know, fired up with the, the enthusiasm for kindness and knowing what kindness can do. So, so kindness leaves everyone and everything better. If I take that into to the work environment, so if you think about how you could show up with kindness at, at work, and so there's a couple of couple of examples, and let, let me give you an example of which came out very much in in lockdown when we were all working on these screens and kind of you know where people were really sort of struggling. Um, so kindness, we we find that people often in situations, you know, you might see somebody turn up late for a meeting, for example, and they don't put their screen on, and they're kind of you know when they talk, that's sort of not very, they don't say that much you know they're just generally down uh, and not contributing that much it'd be really easy just to kind of move on to your next meeting forget about them and just you know move on and, and say oh so and so is always like that you know kind of just pass on but a bit like when the person reached out to me and I responded you know actually if you reach out to somebody in this, this where, where you've seen that there might be something off with them there's something not quite right you know time and time again you know, I found and other people have, have told me they found that, you know, something may have happened to that person just before that meeting. You know, they may have had some really bad news and they kind of they brought it into the work environment. You know, they couldn't help themselves because they're, they're, they're suffering. So by reaching out to that person and just saying to them, you know, how are you really? You know, what's going on? You know, how, how are you feeling? What you're doing is you're you're showing empathy. You're showing that person that they've been seen and, and also you're making sure that they feel they've been heard. And because you've reached out, because you've been kind to them, you can do something for that person. They can feel that they've been heard. They can, maybe you can help them in some way. But also you can act accordingly in the sense of you can cut them some slack. You can realise they were in that meeting in that way because they were struggling in some way because of something they brought in. And that's a very clear example of kindness at work and kind of, you know, kindness operating, which is about seeing other people, seeing where they're coming from and then acting accordingly in ways that are really appropriate. Other examples uh, in work is, you know, when you think about meetings, when you have meetings, so, you know, often in meetings, people show up, they're late, they're looking at their laptop, they're not really concentrating, you know, they're sort of, you know, the screens, you know, videos not on or anything like that. You know, you turn up to many meetings, you don't really know what the meeting's about, <clears throat> you don't know what you're trying to get out of the meeting, you might not even know why you're supposed to be there, it just popped up in your, in your calendar and, and, and there you are. What we say is that's an example of an unkind meeting where really that, you know, you're not you're not getting the best out of the people that are there. They're going to walk away from that meeting, meeting certainly not feeling better in any way. 
So a kind meeting, thank you for the prompt on the time. A kind meeting is one where where basically, you know, it's very clear why, why you're there, you know, why people are showing up, what the contribution is you're supposed to be making. You make sure that if you're running that meeting, that everyone has the opportunity to be heard, to be listened to, and you walk away from that meeting, everyone knowing what they're about, what they need to do next. That's an example of, of a kind meeting. So kindness is something that when you you think about people, when you're being human, when you're really focusing on, you know, hearing other people, seeing other people, when you're giving people, you know, kindness, it, it, it's so powerful at work. You know, I could go on for hours. I, I won't. But, you know, what we do know is that simple, small acts of kindness within organisations are positively contagious. So just a simple act can kind of make somebody smile because it fires off all those endorphins and kind of make people feel good. And then they go on and they go and be kind to others. So, you know, there's there's never there's never enough kindness. And the beautiful thing about kindness is a simple act can a save someone's day and change things forever, but also encourages more kindness in, in the organization. And that's really what we do with organizations. We shine a spotlight on kindness and we encourage it in there. So I'm going to close up. I could talk for hours about kindness. It is my favourite subject. But what I'd like to do is to really just ask you one question and then to ponder on this. And the question is, we talk about work kind. We use the hashtag work kind as a shortcut. So I'm really interested in how you work kind. Thank you for listening. We hope you had some incredible and beautiful conversations. Uh, we'd love to hear some shares and Magnus would too, of course. And by the way, Magnus is going to post in the chat his website so that you have uh, a way to connect to him. But could we have some shares, please? Uh, give me a hands up. Um, and I see Christy and we'll take three. I see Peg and we'll start with Christy. Come on in. Well, this wasn't actually in our group, but I want to tell a, a little bit about when my son was in middle school and I saw him really had some friends over and he really treated them meanly. And I said, I, I, I mean, it was heartbreaking to me. And I said, honey, if I were you over here, I wouldn't want to be your friend. I mean, that was a hard thing to say to my son, but I said, so I'm going to give you two consequences. And one was to go to this really positive camp experience. The other was to go to school every day and come home with three acts of kindness that he did. And it wasn't more than three days later, he came back and said, mom, people like me. <laughs> that is a great story and a beautiful teaching for your child. Thank you for being a model for that, Christy. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Beautiful. Peg, come on in. I was in an awesome breakthrough room with Judith, Steve, and Alexi. MJ was with us, but she wasn't able to come off mute. Um, anyway, we had great conversations about paying for the coffee in the car behind us or at the drive through for the food and when you used to have toll booths with people taking the money, doing the same kind of thing and reactions that people get and um, just showing up with a smile and remembering what Magnus said about, you don't know what somebody faced before they got to work and being understanding and flip that coin and put yourself in their shoes and imagine the worst thing. And it probably wasn't that bad, but give them a little bit of grace and space and be kind to them and it'll turn their day around. Oh, Great beautiful. conversation. Thanks everybody. Beautiful. Thank you, Peg. All right, let's bring G What I got was something I didn't expect um, because some very kind people in my group were experiencing things that they didn't feel really kind about, but they were being kind to themselves to acknowledge that. And I find that I'm not kind to myself. Mm. And that I learned that these extremely kind people, one in particular, was really suffering and uh, having this thing that didn't work out, that was, you know, not her fault. But she showed kindness to herself to allow herself to have the feelings and to feel disappointed and to be okay with that and didn't make herself wrong about it. And I, I learned a lot from that. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, Gina, now that you're bringing it up, how about kindness to ourselves? You know, I do uh, five things I'm grateful for every single morning. We, I speak them out loud with Steve, Lilo, who's on here. And uh, we do them five things at night that we're grateful for. And, you know, I realize sometimes that I forget to say, I'm grateful for me. <laughs> Being kind to me, right? It's the same thing. So thank you, Gina, for presencing for everybody to be kind to yourself. We'll take one more from Sue. Come on in, Sue. 
I had the most productive networking session ever in my life. We had Elaine and Carla and they added so much value to my life that I cannot even uh, tell you. So totally, totally appreciate. It was one of the best. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sue. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And sorry we couldn't bring you in. We're getting a little bit of internet issues here. But um, just know we heard you, saw you, and it was beautiful. Beautiful. Well, thank you, everybody, for sharing that. We are going to do another circle, but I have a few announcements for our beautiful Kindness Circle members. Number one, on November, let me just double check, 12th, November 12th, from 9 to noon Pacific, please, 9 to noon Pacific, we're going to have a wonderful Kindness Summit to celebrate World Kindness Day. All right. So just know um, this is a big thing. I'm going to ask for your help to spread it out there. We had 150 people show up last year. And here's something fun about that. Um, and when Mary Beth's Internet hopefully is working, she's going to post that. Um, something fun for that is I'm looking for two things. One is we have one more spot for a speaker. These are like, you know, 12 minute spots even shorter than a TED talk. <laughs> and um, and I'm looking for one more great speaker. Magnus and I were talking during break. I think we may have actually have the spot filled, but if you have a great story, and I meaning somebody you know particularly is could be a great kind of speaker, we're looking for that. And I always love featuring a kid, somebody maybe under 15 and under, okay? Anyone, anyone who was there last year, you saw amazing people in the year before. I've had these great kids uh, talking about their projects. So if you have someone, know someone, please do me a favor, email Mary Beth. It's info at jilllublin.com and say, hey, I know a great speaker, I know a great kid, and um, we would love to hear your suggestions, just saying. Okay, so we I, I appreciate that. Again, next month, we are inviting you to invite up to three friends because you're here, you're members, and it's jilllublin.com slash kindness circles. And for next month, just a reminder, we will be having three networking circles. You'll meet, meet like 25 people, just saying, um, of this beautiful community. So super excited for that, super excited for that. I also want to tell you, you know that I'm a publicity expert. I wrote the book, Guerrilla Publicity. I am having a wonderful publicity breakthrough boot camp where we actually have media there. It's completely different than my publicity course. Anybody who's been in that, we are going to have media there. I'm going to have hot seats, which are now called love seats. Um, I'm going to have really practical, tactical, interactive breakouts, plus panels of experts in media who are working it and know what works and what's hot and what's not. So we're going to be um, in an interactive short days, very short days, two to four hours on October 19 to 21. We're giving you the early bird special. It's $97, just so you know. And please go to jolublin.com slash bootcamp and register. You're going to love it. Just saying. It's a very fun, interactive program. Um, and that, if you would help me, I'm going to ask for a kind act to help me spread the word. This is a lot of this is referral. I'd be very grateful. List it in your social media, send it to some folks you think would be a great match. We would be very grateful. So thank you in advance for that. What I'd love to do now is put you back into another circle. So we're going to do uh, five more, 12 minutes. Person with the shortest hair, you're going to go first. Person with the longest hair, please be the timer. Person with the shortest hair, when you're finished, go ahead and call on the next person. We'll see you back here in 12 minutes. Welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful session. Can we first um, give another round of woo, 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 thank you, thank you, and love to Magnus, thank you, and love to all of you for showing up for another great day. I'm gonna read a uh, quote and maybe then we'll take uh, two to three shares. Who's got quick shares as we come to the top of the hour? Anybody have some shares? Raise your hand in the Hollywood squares and the reactions would be great. But I wanna read a quote from Mahatma Gandhi who said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. 
I thought that'd be a beautiful way to uh, think about your next step. And Paula, come on in. Let's do some share. Nice to mm -hmm. see you. Good to see you too, Jill. And I want to say thank you to you for bringing us all together and, and opening us all up into um, kindness and the act of kindness and eventually profits of kindness, right? As we go forward in our businesses. Um, we had we had a fun dialogue um, in our um, in our group and about um, opening up a dialogue, kind of like with with the, the unsaid things and um, uh, you know being careful around taboo subjects um, and yeah and just being truthful, like letting people know, hey, I'm dealing with this, so. Uh, take it easy on me or whatever the disclosure is and communicating what it is that you're going through so that people know so they're not taking um, you any which way because you've you've put it out there and I think that's really helpful especially in a group setting and a business setting um, going into meetings and so forth and to have interaction with other people um, and we've discussed it's it's not like a free pass but it's just it's information that is helpful to some other people that may be thinking something is really off with you or whatever and in a business setting it could really affect your position um within your company or with on within your team i so. love that and just being mm -hmm. you know honest here's what's up mm -hmm. yep it's really powerful thank you paula for sure. sharing mike is it fast all right bring him on in <laughs> okay I just wanted to say we had a great group and I just wanted to thank Bert and Randy who both said oh, I've got someone you should talk to and Randy has already sent me an email with their details. <laughs> it's really <laughs> lovely. Thank you guys. And I love this and this is a reminder for all of you. This is what this is for. So um, thank you, Mike. Thank you for that. I love that. And uh, I want to really encourage all of you to uh, connect through the directory that we have to support each one of you and to thank you all. Mary Beth, let's just bring me on if you could. She's just posted the Skillshare directory. Go in it. Put who you are. Put what you do. Let's keep you all connected in kindness, my friends, because it's the only way, as we know, and uh, the power of being kind is what's moving the world and moving you. And I look so forward to seeing you next month where we will have three networking circles, all networking all the time to be kind. Can't wait to see you next month. Keep being kind, everyone. Keep being kind. <laughs> see you all next time.